So, so we are here today um, to talk about maintaining good mental health, and uh, we're joined by Acharya Devanishta, uh, and she teaches meditation and offers guidance to aspirants looking for personal spiritual practice. She is a uh, mother of five grown children and a parent educator with a specialty in infant massage, adoption, and breastfeeding. She has been an active student of Prout, so the progressive utilization theory, for many years and works for social change in many areas of our society. Currently, she serves on the Proudest Universal Denmark Advisory Board on the steering team of the International Women's Organization, Prout Sisters, and is Vice President of the Prout Institute Board. Um, she li currently lives in Massachusetts, travels extensively worldwide, and we're very, very pleased to have her here today to talk about um, mental health. So, Dee Dee, welcome. And, uh, You're muted, Dee Dee. All right, let's try again. Um, I'm so glad to be here and thank you all for coming. Um, I look forward to talking today. Um, I Right now in health there, at least here in the United States, there is a big um, stir around something they call whole health. Um, all the... VA hospitals in the United States, which are probably the, you know, the largest um, set of facilities linked together across the United States, are working with whole health with their patients now and um, presenting new ideas about using meditation, about using um, yoga, acupuncture, lifestyle, social supports, looking at all of these things as they look at their at the um, men and women that they work with and in helping them with um, recovering from whether, whatever diagnosis they have. They realize that you can't just look at the diagnosis, you have to look at the whole person. So what I've put together here, um, something I put together last summer for the, um, the Prout Retreat in Copenhagen, Denmark, um, because what we're doing is looking at mental health as one of the major concerns that people have right now in their lives and um, how politically um, structurally in our in our in our culture we're not doing a good job of supporting mental health what I'd like to talk about here is the things that you can do, the wide amount of things that you can do as an individual to ensure that you have good mental health. And um, so I did a lot of research um, and it came up with, with what I think is really quite a list of, of things that we can do in our own lives to protect and build our mental health. So let's... So what is good mental health? Um, according to the World Health Organization, it's defined as a state of well-being where, able, where individuals are able to recognize their own potential, to work productively, to cope with the normal stresses of life, and make a positive contribution to their community. Um, for, um, I, I know that you're doing some translations here. Um, pretty much I've covered things well on the slide to help the interpreters, um, with it. Um, but if you need me to slow down, please tell me. Hmm. What does PR Sarkar, the founder of Prout, the, um, the, um, leader of the Anandamarga meditation system say about mental imbalance. When the rhythm of your movement in the external world, the rhythm of your lifestyle conforms to your inner psychic rhythm, you feel comfortable. 
But when these rhythms do not correspond, then you begin to feel uncomfortable. Then you begin to have mental stress and mental imbalance. What needs to be done to reduce mental imbalance? According to P.R. Sarkar, for progress in the external world, there should be clear guidelines and a clear and well-integrated philosophical base. Society often lacks this, and that is why people tend to lose balance in their social life. So if our, if our environment is chaotic, if, our, um, if we don't have clear, um, rational guidelines for our life, then trying to go back and forth between those two things, our own life and and what we're expecting and what we're living with is hard. Um, nurturing yourself is vitally important. Um, you can create a good and living environment for yourself. Look at who you live with, what happens in your home, how you can reduce stress in your own house your own living environment, make good choices that protect you, that help you nest in your own space. Because we spend so much of our time there, at least we need to have our home environment as, as together as we're able to make it. Um, keep your environment clean and organized. Um, absence of clutter can reduce the overstimulation produced by too much visual stimuli. Um, living in an uncluttered envir environment increases your focus and your ability to concentrate. I often find that when things seem like they're falling apart in my life, if I just look around at certain things in my environment that are, are chaotic and I clean them up, it helps me clean up my mind too. Um, Develop a regular schedule that supports your daily needs. Um, routine can help reduce stress. It can lead to better mental health, gives you more time to relax and less anxiety. So creating a, um, a, a schedule that works for yourself, and a routine, will free you from having to think, okay, what should I do next? What's, um, what's important right now? Routines signal change in the time of day. They let us know when to eat, to sleep, when to exercise, to get sunlight, when to relax, and they give us more time for the things that we value and enjoy. Yeah. Getting enough sleep is really important. And um, I think it's really easy to cheat ourselves on this. And particularly... As I've gotten older, I've noticed that if I don't get enough sleep, I just simply don't think as well. Um, it's essential for our good mental health. Irregularity in sleep and lack of sleep can lead to fatigue, to irritability, the difficulty concentrating. Research studies show that, that students who have um, not had enough sleep do not do as well on exams, on um, learning activities. And just what you did last night can make a difference in how you do today. Um, and if you have lack of sleep and irregularity in your schedule for long periods of time, we don't file things away in our brain as well when we're tired. And so it can lead to things being disorganized inside your own cognitive processes. Lack of sleep also contributes to development of dementia um, over time. Um, drink pl plenty of liquids to avoid dehydration and eliminate toxins. Squeeze this up a little bit for you. Um, dehydration reduces brain energy serotonin production and concentration and reaction time reaction time 
Just a 2% fluid loss can affect the memory, the mood, the concentration, and the reaction time, according to the National Council on Aging in the U.S. and according to research. Avoid stimulants like alcohol. Alcohol affects the brain in many ways. High doses may cause feelings of sadness, such as depression, during intoxication that evolve into feelings of nervousness, anxiety, during the subsequent hangover and withdrawal. Um, so avoiding stimulants that, um, that change the way your mind works and affect your mind and then have feelings of, of um, withdrawal afterwards can be very important in, for mental health. Also, cannabis, um, which at least here in the United States has become more legal and, and much more available, um, can um, people who use marijuana are more likely to develop temporary psychosis, not knowing what is real, hallucinations, paranoia, and long-lasting mental disorders, including schizophrenia, um, where people might see or hear things that are not really there. Um, that comes from the Centers for D Disease Control and Prevention here in the U.S. Reduce stress in your life. One way to reduce anxiety is by developing steps that work for you. For example, deep breathing. Sound familiar? Or noticing the rectangles in your environment. Um, if you're feeling really disoriented, just... Um, saying, okay, concentrating on something around you, maybe the beautiful things or, or the shapes around you or something like that can center yourself and bring you back. Um, change your self-talk. Um, you know, if you um, are saying, oh, I really blew that. I, I'm always messing up. Um, that causes yourself a lot of stress. Um if you can change the way you talk to yourself and say, oh, I didn't do that so well, but I learned a lot from that, that can reduce your stress and and um, and, uh, and bring you back to center. And um, keep in the present. You know, don't, don't spend a lot of time in the past. Um, let's look at positive self-talk. Be aware of and recognize negative thoughts that you have. Stop and challenge that thought. Correct it. Balance each negative thought you do have with a positive one. Well, I didn't do so good on that, but I will do better next time because now I know. Recognize the progress when you see your patterns and be kind to yourself. And Practicing meditation is something that came up again and again in the research that I did. Um, meditation is now being recognized um, as, as a really important way for people to uh, maintain mental health. When we meditate, we give our brain a chance to reorganize. We focus on positive things. You know, we just talked about negative self-talk. Talk. You know, positive self-talk is saying is thinking, you know, everything in the world is one. Everything is united together. Um, I'm surrounded by love and care. Um, these, these are all things that help us feel positive and approach things in a, in a new way. Um, meditation was as effective in research as prolonged exposure therapy at reducing PTSD um, post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms and depression. It was more effect effective than PTSD health education. In other words, talking about the challenges that they had gone through in the past was less effective than practicing meditation. Meditators showed improvement in mood and overall quality of life in research. Exercise regularly. Being physically active releases those feel-good endorphins, dopamine, um, endorph and promotes the expression of brain-derived neurotrophic trophic factor, BDNF, that can enhance your sense of well-being and reduce stress. 
Um, I was feeling really low the other day, and I went out and I was going to do some work at a at a our food co-op where there's a nice cafe. But I said, um, oh, you know, the it's warm outside, and I had my bike in the back of the car, so I went for a bicycle ride first, and then I sat down and did my work, and I was just amazed at how I could turn myself around so much in a two-hour period of time, and I think exercise was an important part of that. Um, exercise was clearly effective in research studies in reducing depression, and in a few studies, results were on par with antidepressant drugs. So if meditation can be as good as drugs at um, at reducing your depression, um, we need to learn more of it, do more of it. Antidepressant meditations generally take several weeks or months to show their full effect. Exercise can improve mood almost immediately, um, making it a valuable supplement to frontline treatments such as drugs or therapy. So getting exercise um, can make an immediate difference for somebody. And exercising regularly can maintain that um, that positive mood. Exercise stimulates the release of endocannabinoids, molecules that are important in modifying the connections between brain cells and the mechanism that underlies learning. This may provide another way of enhancing the learning that underlies successful treatment for depression, PTSD, and other mental disorders. So meditation, exercise, these are daily things that we can do that can help our mental, help our mental health. Spend time in nature. A meta-analysis or of a number of different research studies published last year found that nature walks effectively improve mental health with a noted decrease in both anxiety and depression. Shirin yoku or forest bathing helps activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which lowers heart rate and blood pressure and induces a calming effect. So make some of your exercise outside. Um, take a walk, take a break, just go in your backyard and you've got one and um and watch the squirrels and the chipmunks and and the birds and the worms and the caterpillars across university study in 2019 found that exposure to nature in children on the autism spectrum provided motosensory emotional and social benefits um, so it was support, supportive for children who had autism. Reduction in ADHD symptoms has been found amongst children that spend a portion of every day in green play, regardless of location, income level, or other parameters. So getting outside, um, playing outside, makes a tremendous difference for children and probably for us as adults also. Help others and do good in the world. When we do good things for other people, um, we we feel good about ourselves. We feel like we're worthwhile. You know, where we're worth something to the world. We're help, helping other people. So helping others can positively impact our mental health and well being. It lessens anxiety while enhancing one's sense of well-being, self-esteem, and contentment. Journal about your experiences. Um, for me, journaling is one of the primary ways that I work on my mental health. That when I feel upset over something, I sit down and I write about it. And as soon as I've written about it, I feel like I can let it go because it's all recorded there. I can come back to it if I want to, so I don't have to hold it in my head any longer. Um, and I often work into resolving it and, and deciding steps I'm going to take to solve things. Um, journaling can support coping and reduce the impact of stressful events, potentially avoiding burnout and chronic anxiety. Studies leak writing privately 
about stressful events and capturing thoughts and emotions on paper with decreased mental distress. And time spent journaling about deep thoughts and feelings can even reduce the number of sick days taken off work. That was a 2022 study. Be grateful. Gratitude is the practice of focusing on the good things in your life. It can help improve your mood and overall well-being. Take time each day to reflect on what you're grateful for. When I, I remember a time when I was had five kids in five different schools, and I was spending an awful lot of time driving around in my car in the afternoons. And I I began to think about the different things I was appreciative about. Appreciative that I had a car to drive the kids with, appreciative that I had five kids to drive around, you know, appreciative that I had a business that could help me give me time to to be with my kids at the end of the day and things like that. And I began to realize that that gratefulness was really close to feeling God too. That there's something connected with great when we think about how good things are in our life, it 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 was sort of blissful. It 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 brought me closer to a feeling of God during that time. Surround yourself with support. Connect with others. Reach out. Address conflict in your life. Cultivate friendships. Find common interests. Help other people. Connections with others has been shown to prolong people's lives, to um, to make life worth living for people. Um, get help when you need it. Find a counselor, join support groups, address issues you struggle with. Um, Things don't go away because we don't talk about them. They do tend to go away when we do feel heard about them. So find somebody to listen to you, whether it's a friend or whether it's somebody that you meet with for, you know, an hour once a week or or a crisis counselor that you talk to when things are overwhelming. Um. Find protective and supportive environments in your community. Places you can go where you feel safe. I talked about my co-op earlier. We had a new branch of our food co-op go in about three hours from our house. And we spend a lot of time there doing our work, um, writing in my journal, doing things like that, because it's a place where I do feel safe. Like there would somebody would step up and help me if if something came up. It's it's better than um, um than another place where I might not feel so safe. Um, look at place for places where there are people that accept you and your challenges, whatever they are. Um, people that bring out the best in you. Knowing that we have those environments extends our home into our community more. Um, create a family that supports you. Um, you can create a community of your own. Your family is who you want to be your family. Um, who you develop those relationships with. Choose people who support you and people you can support. Maintain optimum health for yourself. Build up your medical resources Get regular checkups, follow through on the concerns that come up because unresolved health issues are a real strong um, promoter of bad mental health. We um, just having a bladder infection can greatly affect your mental health. Um, if your body's not well, your mind will not be either. Um, 
Urinary tract infections can cause sleeping issues, anxiety, depression, confusion, aggression, delusions, hallucinations, and paranoia. So um, keep up your medical health. And if you do begin to feel like things are falling apart, check in with your doctor, um, even if it's not the right time of year, <laughs> and um, and find out if there's anything going on in your system that's that's causing you to um, to fall apart. Um, eat a healthy diet. I think this is really important. Um, risk factors such as socioeconomic status and trauma are not amenable to simple interventions. Nutrition has a simple appeal. All, all of us eat, and all of us could eat better, probably. Um, and putting the energy into that will come back to you by giving you more energy. So it's not, you know, it's a, it's a loop that works. You know, you put energy into it. It takes some time, but then you have more energy, and that energy can go elsewhere. Shifting the diet is not only a means to promote mental health, it is also a way to promote recovery from mental illness once it has already taken hold, according to research. So people who have mental health issues whose diet is improved will improve in other ways also. A whole foods, traditional, Mediterranean, Mediterranean types of diets have been found to be protective against developing depression, among other mental illnesses. Um, for example, omega-3 omega fatty acids have been shown to be effective as either standalone or adjunctive treatment for ADHD, major depressive disorder, bipolar depression, and PTSD. So, um, you know, look to your food for eating more plants, eating more vegetables, fruits, whole grains, um, Avoiding sugar, um, very refined foods, these things and replacing them with healthier foods can make a difference in your mental health very quickly. Several nutritional deficiencies such as B12, B9, and zinc can cause symptoms of depression and dementia, such as low mood, fatigue, cognitive decline, and irritability. Um, so that's something you can talk about with your doctor. If you decide that things have been falling apart, you need to talk to them. Talk to them about nutritional things too. Dietary patterns high in processed foods or a Western dietary pattern are strongly correlated with an increased risk of developing depression and mild cognitive impairment in ADHD. Avoid street drugs, drugs and substances. Substance use and addiction can contribute to the development of mental illness. They change the way your body works and your brain works. And you're never quite the same after a prolonged period of, of drug use. Um, substance use can lead to changes in some of the same brain areas that are disrupted in other mental disorders, such as schizophrenia, anxiety, mood, or impulse control disorders. Um, nurture ourselves, take care of ourselves. Increase your resilience and skills. How much time do I have, Krishna Prima? Prima? When do I need to be done? Oh, I mean, you have another, at least another 20 minutes. Great, thanks. Yeah. Um, increase your resilience and skills. Developing coping, problem-solving, and interpersonal skills that will help you be the person you want to be. Um, strengthen your growth skill set. If you can recognize, accept, and aspire to grow, you will help yourself handle future situations. Um, so thinking positively, um, being determined to improve your life. Purposely identify something that you could fail at, like trying a new recipe or skill, and test your ability to be agile in the process. Um, so deliberately doing things that are challenging and then being able to enjoy it and laugh at it afterwards um, or learn from it is important. Practicing failure will allow you to be mentally nimble and regulate your brain's fight, flight or fight response when challenges come your way. 
Interesting thoughts, huh? Create a purposeful activity in your life. Help to remind yourself of the meaning of your life and the lives of others through purposeful activity. By actively pursuing a purposeful activity, you can inadvertently help reset your thinking. For example, participate in a community event that has a common purpose or goal rather than passively scrolling down social media or a news feed. Get out and meet people and do things and and um, and do things with purpose in your life. Some other things to consider. Bach flowers and homeopathics. Um, I use both of these at different times when I find myself worn out or worn down by life. Um, Bach flowers are a set of remedies developed in the last century in Germany mostly and they um, they're made from different natural substances and they're greatly watered down so they don't have any nutritional effect or drug effect but they subtly change the way your mind responds to things um and you can look at mental health issues like addiction, anger, anxiety, depression, fears and phobia, grief, impatience, lack of self-confidence and self-esteem, loneliness, low self-worth, mental exhaustion, PTSD, relationship issues, sleeplessness, stress, suicidal tendencies, trauma, and there are Bach flower remedies that address these things. And you choose up to five remedies that match how you're feeling and mix them up in some water and take a couple drops of them four or five times a day. And you'll find, at least I always find that when I start them, that within a day or two, I'm feeling substantially better. Um, so they're worth educating yourself about. Um, and and for me, you, know, you can invest in the ones that seem like they fit your life most. Or at one time, I got a whole kit of them and um, was able to, to help other people too by giving them Bach flowers. Um, homeopathics, let's see if I have something, no. Um, homeopathics are usually in pill form and not drop form. And they're aimed more at particularly particular diagnoses or illnesses, though they do reflect the mental um, states that you tend to have. For example, um, pulsatilla is for people who tend to cry a lot. Um, and... Um, break into tears when things get overwhelming um, and are clingy to other people. Um, they were great working, both homeopathics and Bach flowers were great working with my kids too on um, the different issues that they went through in their life. Like Arnica, you give a, a child who's fallen down and, you know, st or stubbed their toe or, or whatever. And you give them Arnica and listen to them and say, oh, that really hurt. And then they take the Arnica and then they run off and start playing again. Um, Arnica has a very quick response to get kids back on their feet and it reduces swelling and the things that cause pain. Um, one of the most common ones people have run into. Consider taking herbs. Um, they should be used under the guidance of an experienced herbalist, particularly if taking medication. Um, chamomile, ashwagandha, valerian, lavender, CBD are examples of herbs that can affect your mood. Um, I talked to 
um, a um, natural doctor in our organization who was talking about herbs and the and the need to work with people who really understood them or or educate yourself well about it. Duosinus and kirtan. Um, these are things that we add to our meditation. Asanas are what we call yoga in the United States. Yoga postures uh, are designed to affect the glands in your body to um, to um, affect how you're feeling and responding to the world. Kirtan, we sing at the beginning. Um, lift your hands up when you sing kirtan. Open your body up. You can't feel depressed when you've got your arms up in the air. It's a funny thing about the human body. And um, so lift up your arms and get into those things because they they improve your mental health. It's like smiling. You know, if you say you're feeling really down, but you force yourself to make a smile, just the action of turning your lips up, you know, the corners of your lips up and making that smile will actually cause hormonal changes in your body and make you feel better. Um, um, asanas can be prescribed and practiced to remove imbalances in the body. Um, you can go to acharyas and ask for asanas. There's some people who are, are trained as yoga teachers and have a, a strong feeling for what ones, how ones affect you mentally. PR Sarkar recommends kirtan anytime there is conflict or a feeling of an inferiority complex. Um, and, uh, so think about those things to, for your mental health on a daily basis. These days, this is um, from PR Sarkar. These days, many psychic diseases have appeared as a result of the current mental complexity. Many people are committing suicide. Many people are becoming lunatics. This was written in about 1950 when that word was more in use. The reason is that people are unable to adjust with the various types of complexities in life. The human brain is, brain is limited, and its nerve cells also have a limited capacity. They cannot tolerate these growing complexities. Kirtan gives bliss to Parma Purusha, to that supreme, in the mental sphere, and it also brings joy to human beings, both individually and collectively. It leads them on the path of welfare and frees them from all these complexities. It removes all the diseases of the intellect and allows people to think easily and in the proper way. So PR Sarkar prescribes kirtan for reducing mental illness. He, he also says, in reality, humans want neither joy nor sorrow. They seek mental peace and quietude. In daily life, they come in contact with different kinds of people. At times, they even fight with some people. How will then find one find mental peace? Those who do injustice will also suffer injustice. The people who do injustice will lose their mental balance in any flight. Those who do no injustice will be able to maintain their balance in their fight against injustice. This is the characteristic of a person who has attained mental quietude. So I guess there Bob is saying that mental quietude is the opposite of mental illness. All right.